I don't even know how to cut these videos anymore. I dropped out of uni, so I'm here to talk about it. But hello, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all keeping well and I hope you've had a great start to 2022. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, <laughs> 2021, uh, hence why I didn't film anything. I'm really struggling with this video because I have a tooth and it hurts. <laughs> I feel like I want to make this video not only for myself to look back on in a couple of years time or whenever, a couple of months time, just to reassure myself or just to see the difference in where I am technically now to where I was. But I also wanted to make this video because I think it's so fucking important to people, students or just people my age who are in the dilemma I was. So I'm going to talk about what's happened in 2022, why I'm no longer at uni and why it's okay that I've dropped out and that it doesn't make me a failure in life. I think I think there's such a huge pressure on people to go to university and get their degree and to stick out something that potentially they're not happy in. And I just wanted to reiterate to people that it's okay to drop out. I'm not saying dropping out works for everyone. So I'm going to talk about my university experience why i dropped out so i turned 18 in april 2020 and september 2020 is when all my friends went to university it was the date i was due to go but with everything that happened with covid and i was actually meant to travel it just didn't feel right me going to uni nothing clicked it didn't feel right it felt like a rushed decision i didn't know what i wanted to do and i felt like if i went to uni in september 2020 when all my friends did i felt like it wouldn't have been the right decision it would have been just because i'm following the status quo and I'm following everyone else so I decided to take a year out and honestly for people that don't know what they want to do so if you're due to go to university in September you're freshly turned 18 you don't know what you want to do you're still unsure about uni take a fucking gap year what my gap year was intended to do it didn't but actually it did so much more for me so i worked all throughout gap year i worked throughout the covid pandemic a gap year gave me so much clarity on what i wanted which is ironic because we're taking another gap year but hear me out i'm going into my second gap year but that's later on in the story okay we'll talk about that in a bit i know it's ironic to say now but honestly a gap year gives you so much clarity and it doesn't make you feel rushed and you know what university is always there so if you need three gap years to decide what you want do that. I highly recommend a gap year, especially if you're someone that just doesn't know what they want to do. Take a gap year, just do it. You won't regret it. Once my gap year was over, I was going to the University of Liverpool, which is quite a far away uni from where I live. I live near the London area, so it is quite a long way away from London. I just... I wasn't looking forward to it. I actually filmed a video. It was at like my uni prep lead up uni vlog thing. The whole week leading up to uni I filmed. I was meant to upload that video and it was given a bunch of advice at uni. Again, ironic now, but I wasn't looking forward to it. My whole week leading up to uni was just prep and stress and just, it was a lot. Even moving to uni is a lot and that's okay. Moving so far away from home, getting up and moving to uni, it's, it's a very emotional, it's, it's a big thing. It's a big jump. No matter if you're, you know, moving down the road or if you're moving 400 miles away, you're still going to live on your own you're still going to be independent something that you probably haven't done before prior to going to university so I went to university and i've done it for officially 12 weeks now 12 weeks was enough but no i i think a lot of people probably expect me to come on here and go i hated every second of uni and it's not for me and all this but actually i don't have a negative experience really which is which makes my decision hard but also i think of a, a good decision so as i said i went to the university of liverpool i was studying media and communications it was a three-year course i got into a fab fabulous accommodation i made some amazing friends my housemates were just absolutely fucking incredible and they still are the best people ever and it makes me so emotional thinking about leaving them i know i'll be up there i know i'm gonna go annoy them i know i'm gonna see them again i know it's not um this me leaving liverpool isn't me leaving my friends and losing my friends it's just i'm leaving a university that's it that's literally it and it's taken me a couple of weeks to get my head around that but we've got there liverpool was really good uh it was an, it's a beautiful university very grand it's a russell U group university so it's statistically a very good unit offers a lot and it's fantastic for people that want to do me medicine dental veterinary things like that i think that's what they specialize in I, I don't know exactly what they specialize in but i think it's medicine and i had great nights out i had so much fun i had a great room <sighs> i loved uni 
because of exactly what it was and i think people distort what they want for and what their goals are and what they want to achieve and they get it mixed up with the party life getting so ingrained into the university social life like people want to go to uni to have fun and party and whatever but you know what there's so much more to uni than that and if you're going to uni purely for the social life i think you should strongly reconsider um because yeah it's great it's great the parties are great the going out is great it is all fucking brilliant but deep down in my 12 weeks of uni something wasn't clicking there was still a desperation to come home it felt like uni was something that was only ever going to be temporary it felt like i was on this really long holiday and that at some point i was going to come home it was like a lot it was like a holiday that was like i needed it to end i was desperate to get home but it wasn't ending i didn't know why it was i didn't know if it was because i was unsettled i was like but i'm happy with my friends i'm happy where i am i'm having good fun like i don't want to live at home anymore like why am i feeling all these things and it just something just didn't sit right for me for 12 weeks just something wasn't clicking and it took me a while to figure out what it was and the bottom line is it was my course so as i said i took up media and communications which is a three-year course at the university of liverpool i'm gonna be honest not great <laughs> now this is completely subjective i know a lot of people that have done media and communications and absolutely love it i hated it and it's very strange for me to hate a media course i've done media for these six years now absolutely adore it. it was potentially a field i wanted to go into but i hated my course it was just something that I was doing because I had to do. I wasn't learning anything. Things were just so... Like, I was learning to the assignment. So, you know that saying where people go, oh, you're learning to the book. So, teachers will teach you to the book. So, they'll teach you... Or teach you to the test. That's that's the phrase. That's the one I was looking for. So, teachers will teach you to the test, but they won't teach you in the... They won't teach you the entire entirety of a subject. So, for example, say... If, I don't know. Say if you had a test about... If you had a test in biology obviously in biology you learn about a lot about like obviously the working you know human functions the working body the heart everything like that if that's not going to come up in an exam you're not going to get taught it so for me i was only learning things i needed to learn for an assignment to complete an assignment and say oh look at me i passed so i really hated my course also my course was four hours a week four hours a week so bear in mind i've got five days of the week to fill five days the 12 hours in a day four hours so three till five on a monday and three till five on a tuesday that was it and i was paying so much money so in the uk i'm sure there's lots of uk people watching this but for whatever reason if you don't know how the university system works over here basically you've got to pay for it you take loans out Bruv, why does this shit do this i was in uni for four hours a week and i lived with people that were taking a lot more for long courses i live with a lot of vet students they were in every single day so that meant i had so much downtime to kill now bear in mind you also had to do a so my course required you to do a hell of a lot of work outside of uni outside of being in actual uni so it was something like a hundred something hours i had to complete outside of my uni time now that's all well and good i've never been an exam person i love the fact my course didn't have any tests it was all you know um coursework i was just deteriorating like there's no other better way to put it like i was just a mess at uni people seem to get into these really good routines at uni i wasn't i wasn't completing all my work i would be staying up to all hours in the morning obviously i'd be going out a hell of a lot so i'd be drinking a lot more um and just not taking care of myself like at all and that's not to say that if you're this is not a video to put you off going to university this is just my experience for someone who's pretty good like i'm someone who i'm pretty i can look after myself i don't need to have my parents on me 24 7 i'm i'm a very independent person i'm definitely able and capable to live alone but i had so much downtime to kill and i was literally doing nothing in my life like i couldn't tell you what i was doing and it got better there were times of the year it got better so all around christmas uh, my boyfriend came up my best friend came up my mom and my auntie came up to see me and it was such a good time because i was so busy and what i've realized through doing this whole uni process is i am someone that has to keep busy if i don't keep busy i just die <laughs> like i just don't work like i shut down but i i came to realize at uni i'm someone that needs to stay busy pretty much 24 7 and for someone that wasn't doing that i was i i was a mess i there was a there was several days where i just didn't get out of bed at all so i'd go to bed when it was dark i'd get out of bed when it was dark like it was really bad and then i'm gonna put this is where i'm gonna insert the trigger warning i don't want to make this a really intense heavy video because my reasons for dropping out of uni was a combination of things it wasn't one thing but this was a huge thing for me and that was 
binge eating. I have never been diagnosed by a doctor. I've never had, I've never gone to anyone for this. I very rarely talk about this. Um, only very close people in my life kind of know about it, but I genuinely think I have a binge eating disorder. I have from, I had something, I, I just had a really shit year in 2021. Um, a lot of stuff went on in my personal life and I found out that I was a comfort eater, that I find comfort if I'm sad, struggling in any way of life, food is my comfort and I was no longer using food as a fuel I was using it as a coping mechanism to deal with anything that was going on in my life and it was getting completely out of control like completely when you have a disorder like that or when you have issues like that it's always nice to have someone around you aka my parents who if I'm leading really astray off the track they can go okay let's bring it back in again I didn't have anyone at, at 3 a.m. in the morning to turn around and go, no, Shah, go to bed. Don't get out of bed and eat because you feel sad or you're depressed or whatever. Like I just, I had no filter on my stomach. I was able to consume more and more and more food. I was never full ever. And even obviously past the point of fullness, I would still eat and I'd still eat and I'd still eat to the point where I was sick or I couldn't move out of my bed because I'd eaten too much or I was so uncomfortable because I was so uncomfortably full. I had experiences of binge eating across, like through my lifetime. But the only time I really badly experienced it prior to university was in f around February, March uh, 2021. Um, I had a big loss in the family and that became a huge coping mechanism. And I kind of turned my life around near my birthday. I got really healthy. I went on a calorie deficit, which doesn't work for everyone. And this is like two extremes I'm talking about here. For me, I was able to lose the weight that I gained by because of the binge eating. I lost it through a calorie deficit and doing, I'd say a really healthy amount of exercise. And it was just, I was able to eat and I live my life and not be consumed. Literally, I can't explain it. When you're a comfort eater, you are so dictated and consumed by the thought of food. Like when your next meal is, counting down the time to your next meal, like you're like, oh, I'm sad, like let's eat. Like it's it's such a toxic cycle. And for me, it was just worse at uni. But as I, as I was saying, I got really healthy in the start of 2021 and I was the best version of myself. I was so happy. It worked wonders for my mental health and I was the happiest I'd ever been. Like I look back around my birthday, I'd say around May time of last year, I was the best fucking version of Charlotte. Like I was living my best fucking life. I did that all on my own. I did the calorie deficit on my own and it was hard. I didn't do something that was too restrictive, like these really restrictive diets. I didn't do anything like that. I was able to pick myself up out of this dark horrible place and go you know what i don't have to abuse food anymore i got to a really good point so it all obviously spiraled out of control again when i was at uni it obviously takes a toll on your mental health because i felt like shit because i was eating so much shit food so i was fueling myself with such awful awful shit food and then expecting to do a 12 hour day like of course i couldn't do that i couldn't stay awake i had to take naps because of the sugar of the sugar lows because i wasn't constantly eating it was just toxic and i was going down a really really scary scary path so that was a huge reason and coming home was a huge reality check i am so fortunate to have incredible people around me that were scared for me and they were able to come to me and go you know what Shah, like i'm scared I, I i you know to be able to talk to me and go this isn't healthy you need to do something not just because i've gained weight but because of my health and it was affecting my mental health and it was affecting the way i spoke to people and how i carry myself everything i became a very unhealthy version of myself i was also drinking a lot you do tend to drink a lot at uni but my drinking tolerance has absolutely skyrocketed uh obviously because you're so used to it you build up a tolerance so that was one of the huge factors for me and it was coming home and realizing actually this is really unhealthy. Obviously that binge eating in coupled with my hatred of my course, I just hated it so much. I wasn't learning anything. I found it incredibly boring. And yes, you will go through waves. So if you're taking a course now and you're not completely happy with it, but you know something upcoming, you know it's gonna be good in the long run, then of course you stick with it. You're not gonna love, like for example, with a job, you're not gonna love every second of your job, 24 hours of the day. But it was just ridiculous. Like, like there was absolutely, I was 12 weeks. Like I wasn't even there a couple of weeks now and I had no motivation to do anything. I was already missing lectures. I was already not, like I wasn't turning up to lectures. I wasn't doing my work. And like, I know a couple of like people are gonna say, oh, it's first year, it doesn't matter. First year doesn't matter. But like, if you've already got yourself into that toxic routine and that cycle, how are you ever gonna get yourself out of it in year two and year three? Like that, that was a huge, huge thing for me. The last I'd say, there was three huge key factors of why I dropped out of uni. So the first one was obviously the hatred of of my course the second one i was just the worst version of myself drinking smoking eating just just a horrible horrible version of myself at uni which obviously massively impacted my mental health 
Percy's come to join me. So Percy's come to join us. He's giving his mother some moral support. They were two huge factors. And the final one, which I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about, and I think it's really important. It's like one of the biggest factors at uni. Is university comes with the big fat price tag. It is so expensive to go to university. And I think it was something I massively, massively underestimated before I went. When you live away from uni, obviously you're living in student accommodation. You're gonna need money to pay the rent every week or every term, whatever. So the government give you a lump sum of money so that it helps you pay that rent. Now, depending on your parents' earnings, that is also dependent on how much the government are willing to give you. So, so I come from a household where both my parents are in full-time employment. So because of that, they got in the government's eyes, it was very much like, okay, you're well off essentially. You can help pay. We're not gonna give you a big grant because your parents can pay it. Essentially, it's what the government does. And my parents were expected to pay out big lump sums of money every term, as well as provide money for me to live on week to week. So, so that meant that my parents were giving me a set amount of money every single week, as well as paying for my maintenance loan, as well as any outgoings I had, they would pay for. So it was just getting ridiculously expensive. Like that would have been fine. My parents are amazing and they would have done that for me, but there was no, it wasn't gonna be worth it for me because I hated my course, I wasn't working. I was just going out partying all the time, coming back to my room and just sort of hibernating 90% of the time. Like it, it, it wasn't good. And for people who are in degrees where you know that's what you, that's the field of work you want to go into, that's the career you want, that's a career you want to definitely go into. Like it's, that's fine. Because then when you graduate, you go, you know what? All that stress, all that money was worth it. But when I'd ask myself those same questions of, okay, I know this is really financially difficult. I know that my mental health kind of in the gutter and I'm deteriorating, but is it all gonna be worth it? When I graduate in three years time and I can throw that cap off my head, is that gonna be worth it? To me, it wasn't. I've come to this sort of realization, epiphany, if you will, that I just wanna be happy. 2021 is was so hard 2020 was hard with the pandemic and everything going on in everyone's personal lives like so much happened you know they've been two pretty rough years I, ca I can still do the uni thing i can still do everything i want to do but i don't have to break my parents i don't have to break myself and i can actually have some enjoyment while doing it bottom line is i was very unhappy at uni um in regard to my mental health myself the deterioration in myself i just didn't think that it would be worth it and that's okay so my plan is I have, if you go back to one of my older videos, I think it's I like get groovy with me. There's a clip in there where it's like, fuck uni, don't wanna do uni, but I really wanna start my own business. I went to university this year. Um, I was supposed to be going to my dream uni. Um, I was so excited, but because of Corona, I wouldn't be getting the full university experience. And I know a lot of people my age that are going off to uni this year are deferring because they know they're not gonna get the full uni experience and you're paying out like 9,000 pounds a year minimum to sit behind a computer screen. And I was super excited to go, but it's not for me this year. I feel like I'd be kidding myself if I when, long story short, I want to start up my own business. It's going to be a beauty sort of thing. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much now just because it is literally in the really early stages. I'm actually coming back to my original plan. So I've always loved beauty. I've always wanted to get, I've always, always wanted to have my own beauty business, whether that be me doing lashes, eyebrows, makeup, whatever. I am also going back to uni, but I'm going to a university much more local to me, which massively helps because I still want my degree. I still love media. I was just on the wrong media course. So I'm going to go study media and journalism at a very local university to myself. That is what's happened. So now I'm here and I'm officially university dropout students. But I know this is the best thing for me in the long run. I know this is what's gonna make me happy. Um, I know my goals and ambitions and I'm definitely gonna get there and I'm more motivated now than ever to achieve what I wanna do, achieve those goals, not listen to anyone else and just have a bad bitch 2022 20, years. Liverpool's a fantastic university. I also wanna say this, this is absolutely nothing against them. Um, it is amazing and I'm gonna miss it so dearly and it's gorgeous, it's such a grand university and I would recommend it to someone who wants to do a, quite a major degree. Please don't feel like a failure just because you dropped out of uni, a failure does, dropping out of uni does not make you any less than or unsuccessful. It means you're bold enough to take the risk and that risk can sometimes be a huge payoff and I know for a fact mine will be in myself, in my mental health, in my well-being, in my career. It will just be a lot better and it's better for myself, my relationships and it's going to be hard but sometimes the best things in life aren't always the easiest. So. I feel like um, a life coach. I should be your life coach. 
subscribe if you need a life coach. But that's it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you if you want to have a chat about uni, then we can definitely have a chat. Yeah, I just I hope this video, even if it just helped one person out, would be hurt. Pulled a muscle in my weenus. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go, because I have an infection in my tooth. I don't know if I mentioned this, but it really flipping hurts. Uh, subscribe for more content. I definitely will be doing more like fun, lively content, but I just thought this would be a good way to introduce me back to the, back to the game, back to the channel. Love you loads. Subscribe, follow me on my social medias, and I'll see you soon. I'm not gonna lie, makeup looks so cute. Okay, bye.